always been around these sort of complex women, you know, and my goal is always to explore, <coughs> excuse me, you know, again, how society would look at them. But me, you know, growing up, these were my queens. And so for me creating these pieces, now I have to look at them and say, you know, how am I reflected in these pieces? So yeah, everything that I do is, you know, from my, my past and my, my present. Was there ever a time where you were afraid to reveal the, the history of your mother and your aunt for fear that people would somehow judge you um, with that past and that being part of your your you know, upbringing? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I did. Well, because growing up in Detroit and you know coming up from that, one of the most amazing things my mom did was make sure that my siblings and I were right by her side on her um, road to recovery. So she made sure we went to meetings, conventions, and it scared the bejesus out of us to not ever want to do drugs, you know. And so when I went to college, um, you know, I'm like, yeah, I thought everybody had parents who were, you know, I, I was just so naive and they're like, no, you know, <laughs> everyone doesn't have this like kind of crazy background. So I had an amazing childhood. And so, you know, I think, when I had the first interview about this body of work I explored, I was really concerned about my um, how my siblings would feel, and even my mom. And she like, look, this is my my testimony. You know, you have to, you have to. I made it through, and so you know, I feel really honored to share that that story and to do these pieces mm -hmm. because it's not necessarily to uplift them. It's just to showcase and accept. You know, these individuals are extremely complex and. We all are very complex individuals, and you know some of the, our life's burdens is, is part of our story. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, well, uh, yes, my my artwork is autobiographical in that a memory that comes to me is uh, being in in Colombia in the Andes, and uh, you know the Andes in that part, there cool air, hot sun, absolutely gorgeous nature and sitting under a tree. And that was my solace, always to be near a tree, near nature. And uh, so when I'm working with wood, there's something about it that, that uh, I think rec I recall that solace. And secret? Well, with the horrors I saw as a child, I now actively pursue beauty. I look for beauty. I do not really like to uh, picture something that doesn't evoke a serene response of the, in the viewer because I just for me that is important to balance all my memories and so which I are just deeply entrenched yeah I think um, my work is very autobiographical it's uh, really reflects my life experiences. You know, I grew up in Africa and, uh, you know, so there's a lot of, uh, you know, some of the pieces that I work on have the alphabet and the language that I speak and uh, even human rights issues, you know, kind of things that, ideas that I explore are very personal. Um, in, you know, going back to what our, the, the discussion, when I first went, I, I grew up also in the West, so I feel like I balance and straddle both sort of worlds. And our culture is very patriarchal, very you know male dominated. A lot of really some of the traditions are also very disturbing, you know, because they're so entrenched in, in male dominated you know, traditions. And when I went back, I, I went back after you know went to here and um, I specifically wanted to work with women in, in Africa because I really did feel that you know, if I had grown up there my life would be very different and uh, so I really felt compelled to go back and work with women there and make, you know really try and understand the society and make an impact for women there and uh, you know over time some when you when you and I think I went back with a lot of ideals 
stick, you know, very utopian, very you know, ideals, and uh, you know, you find that things are a lot more complex, and that a lot of issues are related to poverty, and it doesn't necessarily affect only women. It affects children, it affects men, it affects the whole society. Uh, it's not only women's rights, but it's also just human rights and civil rights that are at stake as well. So, you know, I think my view also expanded. It's not only women specific, it sort of grew into a larger picture, but it started from that. It started from my recognition that my mother, my grandmother, my, you know, they all had very different lives. They struggled through a very different life than me and went through a lot of different things than I did. And if I had grown up there, my life would be very different. And uh, so it was very much tied into all those kind of things. And I feel like I have a, a bit of a voice, so I'm going to use that as much as possible. And, and uh, you know, for the people who don't have voice. Um, <coughs> next question. Do you feel connected to the art world through a community of women artists, or do you feel isolated? I'll start with you. Um, well, I I feel connected. Um, I actually um, like to engage with other artists. I think a lot of artists do, but I do um, for the, being a member of the different woodworking associations. I have contact with other technical expertise. I have. I am a member of a Women's Caucus of Art. Uh, every month, there's a group of us women artists who meet for supper, and we talk about our artwork. Uh, and so that, I mean, just being here, I feel inspired. And seeing your <coughs> artwork and that you're doing. Uh, so yes, being connected is extremely important. A secret? Um, yes, uh, I don't. I don't really feel isolated. I'm a member of the Art Nation Village in Virginia and Alexandria, where I also volunteer, and I have contacts there. So, and uh, a certain isolation is also good. I think mm -hmm. you need inspiration, but you also need a certain mm -hmm. period of, of isolation where you can create and and really do things. And photography can be sometimes uh, you have to really go out on your own. Nobody else is patient enough to stay with you. <laughs> and really, you know, unless you are maybe a, a journalistic and photographer or a documentary photographer. So, but no, I don't feel isolated. No, I don't feel isolated either. I, uh, you know, I do have, you know, contact with the art world as well, I work with artists there. Um, I, we don't have a particular organization, maybe, of women artists, but, you know, we do, uh, there's there's other women artists that I keep in contact with, and I think I feel connected now that there's so much, you know, there is a lot of uh, information sharing in the web, internet, and things like that, so when you read about other artists, and, you know, there's that kind of connection as well. You can be inspired by somebody going to a museum and seeing somebody else's work, you can feel connected, uh, at least I do, you know, so in those kind of experiences, so you, you, um, you know, sometimes you feel like you are alone pursuing the kind, of, the, the kind of work that you do, maybe they're not enough, I don't have, for example, my circle of friends, I think I'm the only painter, uh, there's nobody in my circle of friends that is an artist, maybe there'll be some performers, some, you know, but there's nobody in my circle of people so of course you have to reach out and you have to go out and do the, the art um, leagues and things like that and do memberships and go to classes. And, you know, you meet other women in other exhibitions and things like that. But um, so in that sense, you're going to find your connection uh, because that's what also sustains you. You know, so I don't necessarily feel uh, isolated, but you know, you, there are times when you just feel like you're doing it on your own. <laughs> Um, I definitely don't. I love female women shows. I love connecting with artists. I host artist gatherings at my home. Um, and I like women because, especially 
um, women who have experienced more than I have because I'm now a mother and I have questions and I want to know what it's like when you get to the next stage and they're five and ten and thirty and how do you do art and babies at the same time um, and I can even come to the tea and be embraced by everybody and bring my son because my husband's out of town and my babysitter's not here and so I think I love that, I love the mother, and I love the grandmother, and I have them wherever I go, and I think that community is just of understanding, because when you bring a baby and it's all men, they just look at you kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I just like, you were all babies once, you know, but there's something very nurturing and kind and um, just understanding about women, so I, I appreciate and just to piggyback off of what everyone is saying, you know, I, I did have the honor of having amazing mentors, um, Della Wells, um, Aziza Hunter, who's in, in, in D.C., mm -hmm. and the challenge for my age group with a lot of my friends, a lot of them don't have children, <laughs> so I'm the only one with kids. So coming to this event, again, like Linda says, really helped me to connect with Maya. I reached out to her like a few months ago, um, so it's, it's no isolation. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> so, um, what role has mentorship played in the development of your work? And secondly, have you served in the role of a mentor or a mentee? And if so, please share your experience. Um, Let's we'll start with you. I didn't really have a mentor. Maybe in a sort of in a spirit because uh, I discovered before I started my photography, I discovered books on it by a Canadian photographer mm -hmm. and who has also a very spiritual approach, which I liked. It was not the usual uh, cultural photography book. And later on, I had the luck to meet him and take some workshops with him. And so yes, it, uh, to a degree, but he lives in Canada, so we, the contact is not that close or anything. And uh, that's my own mentorship. Uh, yeah, mine is, uh, I'd say not in a formal way, but uh, you know, a lot of the um, classes that I've taken are you know with some abstract artists that I really like and have worked with and continue to work with. And uh, I would you know one particular instructor I would say really served as uh, just a great mentor. You know, I mean, I wouldn't. It was not a formal role as a mentor, but uh, just uh, I think she had a gift as an instructor. Uh, I love her work, and she was an instructor that was able to um, bring out the best in all the students and not impose her view or her, you know, style. And in each of us, we're able to sort of develop our own, uh, just get better at what we wanted to try and get in the work. And uh, so I think that she was a big influence for me. Um, and in, in the reverse, I, there's a lot of people in the community here as well from you know, Ethiopia and Eritrea. Uh, and actually there is a, 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 was a great art school in Ethiopia and still is. And there's a lot of artists that came out of there and that do live here, but struggle to sort of connect to the art world and to the community here and so um, you know I try my best to sort of give whatever information and help them in any way to encourage them to sort of branch out and not you know, the culture is so different it's hard sometimes to, to uh, for them to break in and, uh, so I try and help in that role whatever I've been able to to share that um, I like I said I started off with one of my mentors um, Faith Ringgold, Deb Willis. Um, I I really think that mentorship is the way to go, and it's so important. Um, and I just recently, last year, had uh, my first two interns. And I got an email from a girl the other day that sent me a link to a woman's website, and she said, you know, this artist kind of reminds me of yours. Have you do you know who she is? And I said, yeah, that was the person I had my first internship with. <laughs> um, her name is Equa Holmes, and she's an artist based in Boston. 
And uh, I said, it's so funny how that just came full circle. She had no idea that we had such a connection. And um, I just emailed her. I said, you know, I just got this email from a girl. And I want you to know I have interns now. <laughs> and you taught me so much. And, um, you know, thank you. And I think that um, that really helps build the next generation. to pursue your craft 
as best as you can to really uh, to to work at creating the work that is the best quality for yourself and grow and learn as an artist. And I think it works over time. Um, so uh, ultimately, that is my strategy. Might not work, but <laughs> <laughs> that's it. authenticity is it. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with Elsa because uh, I even once have been told in New York that my pictures are too beautiful and not edgy enough. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, that's not my goal. I'm not edgy and, uh, and as you said, I have to be true to myself. And uh, also color photography is only maybe starting to be accepted. Usually it's still mostly black and white. When I say a photographer, what kind of photography are you doing? It's a little difficult for me to explain because people automatically know that journalists are not documenting it in mind. And uh, so, strategy, well, as Elsa said again, I'm true to myself. I will continue doing what I'm doing and hope that maybe more people uh, like my work. And as well as the right, the right people come in here, and I am the right people. Well, uh, this question is difficult uh, because I, I also have to think about myself, like what holds me back uh, from being uh, eclipsed or not non-eclipsed. Um, there, is, I think a self sense of self-confidence has a lot to do with the willingness to put my work out and sometimes I hesitate because, oh, I'm not good enough, or oh, I'm not <coughs> that person, or, you know, and, and I, I, I have an article in, um, and it was a big honor to be featured in the 25th anniversary of the American Lutheran Association catalog. And when uh, the email came out and said, uh, I'd like s stories about how you got into wood turning. So I said, okay, I'll just send my story. I got back an email saying, well, thank you, good luck. So I thought, well, that means I'm not going to be chosen for this. And then as I, I get the catalog and I'm flipping through, there's this one whole page feature on my art and my and how I got into wood turning. And this is a this is a big deal because this catalog goes all over the world. And uh, and I thought, you know. At first, I had the little impulse to say, oh, well, I'm not as good as blah, 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 or so on. So a lot of it, I think, I mean, I know that my art is unique, but it's, it's really a lot of the self-doubt that <coughs> sometimes wins out. And so uh, that's, I think, for me, what I, I need to work on. Um, for me, it, it happened about, let's see, three and a half years ago when I began, began this body of work. And prior to that, I was an oil painter. And I could paint good, but I didn't know what to paint. So I'd paint celebrities or, you know, my family members, which was absolutely fine. But, you know, again, once this grief struck me, and my reaction was to draw. And, and I've never used ink before because these pieces are all ink. And from there, I started collaging. I said, oh, well, this feels really sincere. Even, and it felt so authentic to me. And I remember I had a show in Milwaukee, and I had about, let's say, 15 pieces, and 13 of them sold. I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> this is really. And so I think, um, like Elsa said, what I became, the work became more authentic to me. And that's when, you know, more opportunities came. And I also feel now, I heard some, I can't remember who I'm taking this quote from, but um, they say, you know, all you have to do is keep working and people will make, take notice. Just keep on working. So. That's so interesting what Sigrid was saying. I've also been told in graduate school that my art was too beautiful. <laughs> and I just think, what? Why not? <laughs> you know? Why don't you like something that's beautiful? Um, and so I just embraced it, and I, you know, that was a graduate school critique. Um, he, up here. he obviously wants to be near me. <laughs> 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 you hear me talking, I'm trying to talk about feminism. <laughs> 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 I'm 
having been a part of the organization for the exhibition, that was an interesting conversation that came up in terms of programming. And there were definitely, if, like you were to have a microcosm of the organization, people are coming from different places. But I would just caution, I would say, to be careful about one perspective to look at that show through because there are so many beautiful and diverse points of view that emanate from that show experiences. I heard um, Nina Chapney, uh, Chanel Abney, for instance, talk about her work. And she's definitely talking about personal experience and the evolution of uh, who she was and how that relates to it. So um, I think that definitely you hear that, but I would be careful because that those are mus uh, uh, artists who have come from the studio museum. They are nurtured by other uh, streams of thought outside of how a show sometimes is organized. And so I would invite everybody to take the time to come down to the Portland, the wonderful show. And so the, the, I, I just began reading uh, Torrey's book, and the title I can't remember, but I know post-black post -black. is in the title, post-blackness, I think, is in the title. And you know, I always struggled with what it means to be post-black. I mean, does that mean that we get beyond being black? Mm -hmm. uh, and can we do that in a race-based society? Mm -hmm. And so as I began to read his book, and I'm only in like the second chapter, I began to understand his definition. And basically it came, it has its roots and origin in the art movement with uh, Thelma Golden and an exhibition that she created that took place at the Studio Museum. And basically, uh, and don't quote me on this because I'm still trying to get wrap my head around this whole definition, but basically what his take on it is, is that we should be allowed to express ourselves and be ourselves beyond being defined as and labeled as black. So that a Delilah Pierce painting may not be defined as black art. Sam Gilliam's work may not be defined as black art, but they're black artists. So what does it mean to be a black artist then? So what does it mean to be a, a woman artist? So we're, what the definition and, and the term, how it's being used, is just being an artist beyond associating race, color, gender with that. And um, there's one, um, oh my god, he, he writes about an experience where he's about to jump out of a plane. And um, he's going to the place where he has just arrived and about to go through his training. And I think like two janitors look at him and they're like, man, are you crazy? We don't do that, mm -hmm. you know? And they're black janitors. And I just, I thought about that uh, based on an experience I had in Zimbabwe. I white water rafted down the Zambezi River. And as I'm going through my training, you know, jumping, we, we had to do some kind of jumps and exercises <coughs> before getting in the boat. Um, and our, my, the guide was white. Everyone else that was going down the ramp uh, on the ride was white, and I was the only black and woman. Mm -hmm. And so the brothers, the Zimbabwean brothers, look at me and they just start shaking their hands. <laughs> They're like, sister, do you know what you're getting ready to do? <laughs> There's crocodiles in that water, and um, he said, they said, we don't do this. <laughs> Pull me up just look who's getting in there with you. <laughs> we don't do that. So that was my post-black moment, and I did it, and it was fabulous. Even though we like flipped over five times, I told them that I couldn't swim, so of course I was always taken out of the water first. <laughs> and, and, and there was a, a brother, and I can swim, but I got a strategy, you know, going through this with the knowledge that if that thing flips over, I tell them I can't swim. They're going to look for me first all the time. And it worked. Everybody's like, where is she? Everybody else is like getting further away and they're always picking me out first. And um, and then, you know, the realization when there was a uh, Zimbabwean brother in a kayak ahead of us and he has his flat paddle and he's 
came in the water. And I asked the guy, I said, what is he doing? He said, he's scaring away the, the crocodiles, or the alligators there. He's scaring away the, uh, the alligators so they don't come towards us. I'm like, all right, I'm in it now. You know, I didn't realize that they were going to be so close. I, you know, you see them on the rocks, but I didn't see that, you know. Anyway, so I lived through that experience. But I, I liken that to my post-black moment, where just being allowed to pursue interests, do things without associating my race with it, and being fearful of the notion of doing it because those are not things that we do. So in our practice, in learning Americans, you know, it, and I still grapple with this, because if it's not about being black, then with, why isn't it simply 30 artists from various races if it's not about being black art, you know, and black artists? So, um, but your, your question is a really good question and one that we could really spin around for a while because it's very poignant and very timely based on the fact that the exhibition is, is also there. And, uh, and I just also want to note that um, one of the artists, Carrie Jane Marshall, who's in there, and I think it's one of his pieces from the Black Love series, mm. where, you know, the genius of him, where he's like, you know, a lot of artists, they wanted to run away from being black artists, but instead of running away from it, he ran to it uh -huh. and, and examined what are the problems with quote unquote black art. And if there is a problem as a black artist, what can we do to fix these, you know, the, the, the problems with these kind of genre paintings? So with <clears throat> really researching him, I, I embrace the title black artist. I mean, I don't, I don't run away from it. And I remember being a younger artist coming out of art school I said, you know, I don't want to paint black figures because I just want to paint, uh, I don't want to be known as a black artist, you know, and I, I, I struggled with that. And so, but now it's the complete opposite where I did initially feel uncomfortable doing pictures of a dark skin image. And so now all of my pieces are, you know, what, what is the problem with that? It's no problem at all. So, you know, I just want to know to really look into Carrie James Marshall, that, that series, and just to, hear him talk about that notion of being a black artist, amazing. But also, going back to your question about getting beyond feminist art, being known as a woman painter, which was, you know, historic 